right, I got a sort of a lesson today in how to use the CG3 tuning. CG, CG, CG. Three CGs. I've got other videos that explain this tuning and how to use it, setting up a guitar, um, yeah, that kind of stuff. Look at those. One of the reasons I like the CG3 is because it's easy to learn new fingerings. Uh, you only need to learn them on two need to learn them on two strings, and it's the same on the other four strings. So no matter which two you choose, you can just use the same on the other four strings. So that makes it very nice and easy. I'm going to choose a the Lydian mode. Now the Lydian mode is what you get when you take an, uh, a major diatonic scale, a good do re mi, from the sound of music, you know, and and you start it on the fourth uh, degree of the scale. So if we play in G, a major scale. Right, and we don't start it there, but we start it on its fourth degree. Now what's that fun about this is that we're playing uh, a scale that doesn't have a perfect fourth. It has a flattened fifth instead, uh, or an augmented fourth. I don't care. I mean, music theorists do. We're guitarists, it makes no difference to us. Now, one of the things you can do in CG3, obviously, is playing up here without playing anywhere apart from in the root position and not using open strings. You typically end up with a hexatonic scale because you have to stretch to reach the seventh note of any scale because, you know, we've got a fifth. The interval is a fifth between here and here, so I need a stretch. You know, that's why guitars are generally tuned in fourths and major thirds, things like that, is to make so we don't need those stretches. Uh, but in CG3, we do need that stretch. So we end up with it naturally with playing a lot of hexatonic scales. So, for example, in the Lydian, let's see, I've got my thing here. Right there, at fourth position, there's fourth position, I've got a sort of a scale. Well, let's try starting it on C. And by disposing of the A out the window, I'm not playing it. You know, I've got that going on, which is kind of nice. It's got a flavor to it, a, a certain specific flavor. You know, if you play a minor pentatonic scale, as a lot of beginning guitarists do when they're learning to improvise, to improvise a melody, that is, probably have noticed that it's, it's, it's a subset, it's a five-note subset of a seven-note minor scale. So you just throw a couple of notes out, and you've got fewer notes to play with, but that extra... You know, you've got a minor third here, followed by a minor second, sorry, a major second, and uh, and those minor thirds in there, they add the color, don't they? Similarly, what if we throw out the B from this scale, and we say, all right, the B, the A and the B, the sixth and the seventh degree of the Lydian in C, we'll call them the butter notes. There's a story about Herbie Hancock and Miles Davis. We'll get into the story another day. But I like to think of the butter notes as being, for a chord or for a scale, the seventh and eighth degrees. Sorry, so the sixth and seventh degrees. So in this scale, that would be the A and the B. Uh, we're not going to bother talking about chords just now. So hang on, here we go. There they are colored in. Now, I once played uh, an improvisation. It's actually on YouTube somewhere. I'm not sure where. I, st you know, I started with a melody that just avoids those butter notes, those green and, and purple colors. That's the melody. It's sort of like it's got a nice, nice, nice sort of like launching point for a for for a melodic improvisation of various kinds. Now that's a pentatonic scale. We just made it up by taking our Lydian mode and ejecting those notes. So there's another trick. Uh, but let me just demonstrate that you get different 
hexatonic scales by, uh, by using different positions. Uh, so, for example, if I'm playing in second position... So you see what I'm doing there? You can follow it along on the screen, right? You can see my fingers. This is actually sixth position with a stretch, and I'm going to try and stretching my, my index finger down. Now, all of these are going to mesh together quite nicely, but if we stick to one for a, a, you know, a few bars or, a, or half a minute, a minute, who knows what, it's up to you, and then switch to another one, they'll mesh together nicely, but they'll have a different color. Or you can you can move quickly if you're a bebopper. You try to change chord approximately every half a second, right? And then get as many notes in between those those chord changes as you can. That that's another way of doing things. So let's try the other one in seventh position. This is a nice easy fingering, right? But that doesn't have the C in it, no, right? So if we say that this little is Lydian C, then our tonic is C, we have to resolve to it. Otherwise, it's not really Lydian C, it's some other mode. Um, exactly what a mode is, is, it's complicated, but it has to do with the stability during a particular continuous segment of melodic material. up to the G there. Resolve to the C. Finally, we end up with this tension because the guitar is tuned in C, it's kind of got that feel that that ought to be the tonic, and if we play this noodle around here, it feels like we ought to arrive back there, doesn't it? Anyway, so that's all jolly good fun. Butter notes. You might have noticed that in a minor scale and in a minor chord, let's do the minor scale first. The, the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth degrees of a minor scale are set in stone. That's set in stone. But then... The experience with the harmonic minor scale, the melodic minor scale, and the natural minor scale kind of proves that whatever you want to do with the sixth and the seventh is okay, and you can still call it a minor scale, I think. But anyway, there's my provocation to the music theorists, if you want. Um, and I think it's the same with the chords. If we take a minor chord, if we're going to call it a minor chord, it has to have a minor triad. Uh, and then, yeah, whatever you want with your uh, with your sevenths or or thirteenths, I don't care, you know, um, flatten them, sharpen them, whatever you want. They're <laughs> sharpened. I don't know, augmented sevenths. Is there such a thing? I guess with a minor triad, uh, the seventh has to be minor, so you would sharpen that to get a. Uh, a major in there. Anyway, we'll talk about chords another day. This is all about melodic improvisation. So, uh, where do we go from here? Um, we, that's right, I've got another, another picture for you. This picture. So, imagine you had this chart in front of you, and you've got your guitar tuned in CG3, and you've got this chart in front of you, and you've got a, uh, let's say, a bass player who uh, understands that you're going to be using uh, Lydian C and can follow you around uh, to, to excursions from it. And we're going to use these excursions somehow, and we're going to do them for a little while and then do something different. But what do we mean by excursions? These butter notes are now modified, so we've got the options for them. And we can include or exclude them ad hoc. We can exclude all of them, and I already did, right? That was my... Mm -hmm. 
that pentatonic. Or I can include one, or I can include two, three even, uh, and we'll end up with some pretty fun options. Now, it turns out Guitar Pro, that funny software that some of you might be familiar with, has a database of scales built into it. And I can tell you what some of these are named. Uh, so there it is. Select, find the scale. So we've got an ancient Chinese scale is what you get when you use the A and you don't use a B of any kind. If you use the, uh, the B natural uh, and you don't use an A or uh, the B flat, then you've got, what's that called? Ratnakanti. Ratnakanti. Something like that. Um, and so on and so forth. There's even the Bartok scale in here. So the Bartok scale is what you get if you use the A natural and the B flat. Um, so let's play that because Bartok, yeah, we all love Bartok. Who doesn't like Bartok? <laughs> We could do a lot with that, couldn't we? Let's look for in here uh, some some things we could play with. Let's try up at seventh position. I'm just choosing this at random here. Yeah, let's let's go Bartokian up at the up at the up at the seventh position because seventh position is fun because the the stopped notes I'm going to play don't include the C. They got the G. Oops, they got the G right there but not the C. So what do we get if we play Bartok up here and we exclude the C, which would be the tonic, all right? Now resolve. So, if we just don't go nuts playing all of these notes, but we make a judicious selection for a period of time, and then either move on or move back. So you can start with, like I did in that previous um, improvisation. That can be like your statement of principle. make that a mordant. Is that a mordant? I don't know. Anyway, it's a tiddle. Tiddly, yeah. So we only ever use the B as a little decoration. B, sorry, the B flat as a decoration. Why not? Give it a go. white notes here and the A and the B flat. The other stuff, drop it out. That just sounds like a natural minor scale because remember that thing about the limited period of, uh, you see, there we go, in the middle of the screen, yeah, it's better. Uh, the limited period of time, uh, an, an expanse across time of, um, of your melodic material, we can say for that there's a mode, but we have to judiciously choose where that uh, begins and ends based on our ear. Uh, we could say, yeah, for a while there, it sounds stable. 
there's the key word. It, the mode sounds stable. It doesn't sound like it's moved. Um, and I think that this is a useful use of the word mode there, or at least it works for me. getting the feel for what that mode would be like, or let's say moving between two modes, the mode with the A and the B flat, and the mode without. So anyway, those are some ideas. I got one more to demonstrate for you, which is something I've been playing with myself for a little while. I got a different kind of cheat sheet. Take a look at this one. This is for a uh, Phrygian basis. So in this case, I haven't labeled the, the white notes, but basically we've got a Phrygian mode here which is, again, one of the seven well-known modes of the diatonic major scale. And here are some modifications that we can do to it. If we were to superimpose uh, a Phrygian C and an Aeolian C, then we get one more note. That's the D, the green one. And so it is with the Locrian. We get a G flat, the yellow one. And then there's a couple of others uh, that I particularly enjoy. Uh, the Spanish Phrygian and the Moorish Phrygian. <laughs> well, uh, Spanish Phrygian, well, the Moorish Phrygian gives you quite um, quite the old uh, chromatic runs, but you can switch between sort of like the uh, the B and the, the added B and the added E. But don't forget, while you're playing, so if you are playing a, sorry, I missed an important point here. If you're playing these um, these these scales, then you what you uh, the Phrygian plus Aeolian, you've got a, an octaconic scale. You've got eight notes before you get back to your tonic uh, at, the, um, at the octave. Let's see if I can demonstrate that for you. So let's start with, uh, which one should we do? Let's do, um, dip, 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 dip. if we add a D, then we get an Aeolian um, added. So we get... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then I'm back to the beginning. So that's octatonic scale. Similarly with the Locrian. How am I going to do that? That's going to be quite the stretch, huh? Um, but again, you don't need to be using, to use the scale, you don't need to be using all the notes within a particular horizontal or time expanse. We shift our modes, shift color around a bit. That's part of the fun of creating tension. What was it I was playing with? With the Spanish Phrygian, I found a, a particular uh, pentatonic scale there that's, that reminded me of Monsoon. Remember that band with Sheila Chandra? That's kind of a feel to it, hasn't it? Um, so that's a, a thing that you can play with in the context of a Phrygian. But the Phrygian has also got this glorious thing going on that with, with the, um, the, the second and sixth degrees of the scale are just a, a, a semitone up, a half step up, a minor second up from the, uh, the, the, the tonic and the, and the, and the fifth. So you got that, that stuff going on, which is always fun.
good job of demonstrating that, am I? Um, so if so, anyway, the, the, the point is that a little cheat sheet like this, uh, you can call it sheet music if you want. Why not? Uh, the point here is that we're improvisers and we uh, allow things to happen uh, that are going to happen. That's called committing to the situation of hazard. Uh, and uh, yeah, it doesn't always work, but when it does, it's uh, it's kind of special. And there's art. <laughs> take some practice but you see the you know you get the you get the drift you know CG3 it's it's nice because like you recognize this little pattern it's only on two strings so I'm on my uh, fifth position on the bass strings there I'll try to make that more obvious and then you've got it for the rest of the strings Anyway, um, there's my little lesson. <laughs>